Okay, so we have the sum and difference formulas to talk about today. Um, you must have these memorized. They're not too bad. Um, let's go ahead and look at what's going on with these. Now, before I start with this, I want to make sure I issue a warning one more time. If you have the sine of x plus y, you may never ever go ahead and say that is equal to the sine of x plus the sine of y. It doesn't distribute that way. The only way that you can do this and to break apart the x and y is you must use the sum difference formulas above. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what you would actually use with the sign. All right, so using the same letters that we have in our formula, I'm going to go ahead and say that I have the sine of alpha plus beta. Now, what this is saying is whenever this is a positive sign, you go through and use this formula as the sine of alpha cosine of beta plus the sine of beta cosine of alpha. Whenever this is positive, the sine over here is also positive. So one of the things that you'll no notice about the um, sine formula to go through and expand this, what we have here is both terms have the sine in it and then the cosine, alpha and beta and the alpha and beta switch. So a way that you can remember this is that the sine crosses terms and but keeps the sine. Where if you have the cosine of alpha plus beta, this one is cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. But then you change the sign. So because this was positive here, this is going to be negative in between those two pieces. Then I go through and use the sine of alpha, sine of beta. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some problems with these. Now, if you're looking at the guided notes, you'll go through and if we go through and look at the sine of 75 degrees, one thing I do want to warn you about is your calculator will go ahead and give you an exact answer for this. However, you may check your work in the calculator, but I must see your work in the test or you will not get any credit. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and take this piece that you have, take that sine of 75, and you must break this apart. We must break this into the angles that we have on the unit circle. All right, so going through and doing that, I can rewrite that as the sine of 45 degrees plus the plus 30 degrees. 
All right, so sine, remember sine crosses terms and keeps the sine. So sine of 45 plus 30 degrees is equal to the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees. I keep my positive sign and now I swap them. I switch them around. So now I go back and now I say this is the sine of 30 degrees and the cosine of 45 degrees. Now hopefully we all remember our unit circle. All right, so looking at our unit circle that just appeared for us, remember that our unit circle is in terms of x and y, which means it is in terms of cosine of theta and then the sine of theta. So the sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. That is right here, my x and my y piece. Um, and then I also need for 30 degrees x and y. So my cosine, again, is my y value. So my cosine is times the square root of 3 over 2. I go ahead and add this to the sine of 1, the sine of 30. The sine of 30 is 1 half. And the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. All right, now, operations. Be careful, this is multiplication. When you multiply, you multiply the numerators and the denominators. Now, you can go through and multiply underneath radicals, as long as they're both underneath the radicals. So what this ends up leaving us is the square root of 6 over 4 plus the square root of 2 over 4. I have a common denominator. I'll go ahead and add those together. It's the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go on to the next question that I have here. And that one is the cosine of pi over 12. All right, so the answer for that is I know that if I make that 4 pi minus 3 pi, that will equal 1 pi. And then the nice thing about both of those, if they both had that denominator of 12, um, it works perfectly. What I end up getting then is this reduces and this reduces. And the two values that I would have to use in here would be pi over 3 and pi over 4, which are both values in our unit circle, which is what we want. So I go ahead and rewrite the cosine. Now, cosine is a little bit different. Remember, the cosine, when we rewrite this, it is cosine of pi over 3, and then the next one is also the cosine of pi over 4. Now, let me... Let me back this up a little bit. Um, what I'm saying here is that I know that the cosine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4 is the same thing because we already figured out that pi over 12 is equal to the same thing as pi over 3 minus pi over 4. All right, sorry about that. Um, I skipped a step. So now what we're going through and doing with this these are both my cosine values. But we have to be really careful because even though the cosine here, we use the same piece, what we have to do is we have to remember to change that sign. So that here becomes addition. Now the rest of it, I'm going to go ahead and make that equal to the sine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 4. All right, so coming back and looking up at the unit circle, we need to get those particular values.
So cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. Again, that's from the unit circle. The cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And now I'm adding that to the sine of pi over 3. The sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. So order of operations here again. Make sure you group each of these fractions together. Um, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator gives us the square root of 2 over 4 plus the square root of 6 over 4. So this actually equals the same thing as we had before, the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. Now this is the same kind of question, only this time I'm going to go ahead and backwards and go ahead and combine these. Um, I know with this, because of the fact that I have the sine and cosine in one term, that this is going to be the sine addition or subtraction formula. And when it's the sine, I use the same value in between here. So what I go ahead and this just becomes 73 minus 13 degrees or the sine of 60 degrees. And over here at the unit circle, the sine of 60 degrees is just equal to the square root of 3 over 2. I want to do one more in degrees, but this time I want to go ahead and use the tangent function with this. So if I have the tangent of 105 degrees, I want to break that up. Again, I'm looking for any values on that unit circle that will add or subtract to equal 115 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and say that is the tangent of 45 plus 60 degrees. Now, the way the tangent works is you keep the sign up top, so that is the tangent of 45 plus the tangent of 60 all over 1. Now, the next sign down here, this changes, so this is going to be 1 minus. Um, if I, it's always the opposite of what we started with, and then I go through and multiply those two pieces together. So this is a tangent of 45 times a tangent of 60. All right, again, looking at our unit circle, we know that these are all the exact values that I have to deal with. Um, and the tangent of any point on the unit circle is sine over cosine, which is sine is y over x. So I know out the calculator that the tangent of 45 is 1. I know the tangent of 60 is the square root of 3. Down here in the denominator now I have 1 minus 1 times the square root of 3, which is 1 plus the square root of 3 all over 1 minus the square root of 3. And yes, we do have to rationalize this. So I take that 1 plus the square root of 3 all over 1 minus the square root of 3, and I multiply times the conjugate. And the reason I'm multiplying by the conjugate, oops, that needs to be positive, is the conjugate, all I know this is the sign is different. And again, this is my dots. I want the difference of two squares here in the denominator. So in the numerator, I have 1 plus the square root of 3 squared. You do not need to multiply that out. And in the denominator, because I know that's the difference of two squares, that is my 1 
minus the square root of 3 squared, or 1 minus 3, or just a negative 2.